Welcome back to the CSS Grid course. I'm Zach, and this is part of my full stack roadmap series. If you don't know what that is, please look in the description and read all about it or check this video out. If you haven't seen part one to this course, there's a playlist in the description that you can go to to see everything in order. Let's jump in. So the first thing that we need to do here is give ourselves a little playground that we can use to explore the different properties of CSS Grid. Now in previous tutorials, I've just kind of set up that playground, but at this point in the full stack roadmap series, you should be getting very comfortable with HTML and CSS. For that reason, we're gonna actually construct our little playground together. The first thing that we're always gonna do when we start a CSS style sheet is a little reset. So we're gonna target every single element um, on our page. We're gonna remove all the margin from it. We're gonna remove all the padding from it. And most importantly, we're going to change the box sizing to be border box so that the width and the height that we set to our elements is actually going to be the width and the height of those elements. If this makes no sense to you, you might wanna review the CSS basics video that I created. I'm also going to add a little bit of padding uh, on the body element. So we're just gonna give it 2% padding and that's gonna just bring in our elements here so that they're not just pushed up against the edge. We've already got a rule for our grid container and these are actually already grid items. Um, but I wanna put this uh, as an explicit width and height. So we'll give it a width of 310 pixels and we're gonna give it a height of the same. So a perfect square. And you might wonder why we're doing uh, 310 pixels. It's gonna become very apparent here in a second. I wanna also give it a border. It's gonna be five pixels solid and we're gonna give it a nice little color theme. So let me get my color here like a dark green. So there's our grid container, very explicit um, how we're defining this and it will give us a very nice uh, template to work with. Now just a quick review, the reason why I put a width of 310 and a height of 310 is because we have this five pixel border. So when we have box sizing of border box, the width and the height of the elements are going to be the inner content plus the padding um, plus the border not the margin, margin doesn't count here, but those three things are gonna create that width and the height. And therefore, if we define our grid container at 310 pixels with a five pixel border, that means that on both the horizontal and vertical sides, we have a total of five plus five or 10 pixels of border. And that leaves us with 300 by 300 of empty space to work with within our container. If you don't believe me, I'll prove it. Let's open up the dev tools. We'll select one of the elements and you can see this grid item has a width of 300 pixels. So that's how we got to that. I just wanted an even number to work with so that we're not doing complex calculations. The next thing I wanna do is uh, style our grid items. Right now they just have numbers in there, but we can do a little bit better. So let's add another class here. So we'll say GI1 and then we'll paste that down to the other ones and replace that with uh, one, two, and three. So we have three selectors for our class and then we'll go down and make a couple of rules for that. Um, I'm gonna do the first one as our template and then we'll just replace as we go. So the first one will be 1E4040 as a color and the background color is going to be 71D99E. All right. So there's our first one, then we can just copy this rule one, two times, replace these classes to target these next two elements, and then we will change the color, which I'll spare you watching me do that. All right, we're done with the colors. Now we just need to center these uh, numbers and make them a little bit bigger so that we can see it. A great way to do this is using Flexbox. So we're not getting into grid quite yet, but we can already start to see how using grid and flexbox together is very possible and it's really helpful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take each of these grid items and these are gonna become flex containers. So yes, they are grid items and flex containers at the same exact time. To target them all at once, we'll use their shared class of grid item. Come to the bottom here, type out grid item, and we'll say display flex. 
And once we do that, we can use these align items center and justify content center to put those numbers right in the middle. We just need to make it a little bigger now, so we'll give it a font weight of say 800. It'll make those uh, numbers a little bit thicker. And then we'll say the font size is going to be two rem units. And by default, if we come up here to the HTML and set the font size to 16 pixels, which is pretty much the browser default anyway, um, that means when we set the two rem that it's gonna be 200% of the root element font size, which is 16 pixels. So do 16 times 200% and that's how big these uh, fonts are. Now, as we go along, I'm gonna be popping up some pictures that uh, allow us to see better what's going on within our HTML and CSS. Another way that we can look at this, we can always open the developer tools. And if you hover over this grid, you're gonna actually see some grid lines. So you see those dotted lines around the container, that is the grid that we're dealing with right now. Now I'm using Google Chrome because I wanted to have my Google Slides up for the earlier part of the presentation, but I just opened the same thing up in Firefox and you'll see when you inspect the element within Firefox, there's an even better representation of grid, at least in my opinion. So if you click here and then you drop down the grid section, um, and then kind of hover over this grid container, you can really start to see everything come to life. So quite honestly, if you're doing this, uh, kind of coding along with me, go ahead and use Firefox. It's a much better developer tool environment for CSS grid. Throughout the tutorial, we'll dig into these little developer tools. And I guess quite honestly, I could probably just use Firefox for the rest of this tutorial. I think that's what I'm gonna do so that we have these excellent uh, developer tools at our disposal. So our basic grid template, what you're looking at right here can be represented by uh, this little visual here. So by default, we haven't really done anything other than just uh, enable the grid with the display grid property. But what that will do is automatically create what you're seeing here. So you have one vertical track, so just one column, and then you have three horizontal tracks. And what these are actually called, this is actually called an implicit grid. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But basically you have, once again, you have the lines that the grid items kind of are spaced between. And if you come back to our Firefox developer tools, so let's inspect this element. Here's our grid on the left. Um, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And then if we click so let's collapse the box model. We don't need flex box. So you can see on the left, as we hover over grid here and click this uh, button, you can see that the container is highlighted and we have each of these rows um, kind of highlighted within the developer tools. Then we can also click display line numbers and you can see that we have line number one and line number two. Now, if you're like me, when I'm learning and I see something that doesn't make sense, it irritates me. One of those things here is that there's negative numbers uh, on the grid as lines. We will come back to these negative numbers, but for now, just look over them, don't worry about them. They basically just represent the end of the grid from a row and column perspective, and it allows you to size your items starting from the end of the grid rather than the beginning. Rest assured though, we will come back to this. Uh, for now, just only think in positive numbers. We can also add area names. That's not gonna show us anything right now, but we will uh, talk about that a little bit later. And then finally, extend lines indefinitely or, or infinitely. Um, I like this, it just kind of gives you a nice framework to look at this grid. So uh, in my opinion, checking all of the boxes is gonna give you the best view um, for your grid. And that's what we're gonna do throughout the tutorial. Like I said, at the moment, we only have the grid enabled. We don't have any grid properties set. So right here, grid container, we said display grid. Since all of this stuff is just general styling, what I'm going to do is break out our grid styles and properties up above and then put these below so we don't have to worry about them. So in CSS, as we know, since it's cascading and it reads it top to bottom, we can define a single CSS rule two times. So we can bring 
this display grid up here. And even though these are the same rules, it's going to first apply this and then apply these remaining styles. So pretty much everything below here is general styling, also Flexbox styling. So we will just enter that all down so we can really focus on what's going on. And then I guess all of this stuff applies uh, to that as well. So let's, let's put that down in the general styling also. Let's open up Firefox DevTools uh, once again. We've got a clean slate to work with and what I've done here is just opened up our, our view here so that we have the Firefox DevTools over here on the right opened up to the grid view and then we've selected the grid container. Um, this other one's actually just built into the code pen environment. They have a grid going on behind the scenes. We just wanna click grid container and you can see that it highlights the grid that we have created. The first two properties we're gonna talk about is the explicit structure of the grid. So how many rows and columns do you want? These two properties are grid template rows and grid template columns. We'll start off by being extremely explicit and uh, telling it exactly how much width and height to occupy. So we'll say grid template rows. And for the rows, that's gonna be, you know, top to bottom, so kind of the vertical definition here. And what I wanna say is 20 pixels, 20 pixels, and 20 pixels. What you'll see is, or actually let's make this a little bigger so the numbers uh, fit. So we'll go 50, not 500. Uh, we'll go 50, 50, and 50. And you could of course change this to anything you want. So you could put 80 for the last one and it defines the row differently. Since we've set these rows explicitly, you can see our grid over here on the right has changed a little bit and accordingly on the left. Now we can add our grid template columns and we can be just as explicit. So maybe we say uh, we want the first column to be 30 pixels, then 50 pixels and another 50 pixels or something like that. So after doing that in the top left corner, there's kind of some madness going on there. I'll, I'll explain that in a second. But if we look at our grid definition um, down here in the bottom right, you can see that our, our definition uh, right here for the rows and columns is exactly as we defined. So you just space out the arguments and each additional argument represents an additional row or column. The reason this is all looking weird is because we just haven't given it enough space. So if we open up the code pen editor here, and we come down to the body and give it, I don't know, something like 7% padding, and just allow it to space out, you'll see that the grid, um, grid line definitions are showing a little bit more clearly. We'll keep this setting so that we can see it as we go. More commonly than defining explicit pixel values for our rows and columns, you're gonna see something called a fractional unit. So let's get back to our original grid that we were looking at, kind of the default grid, which would have been three rows in one column. So if we wanted one column, all we have to do is delete all these arguments and put in just one value. So we'll say 100 pixels. And you can see that we just have that one column here, and if we click on the grid on the right, here's, here's the grid that we're working with. To get back to our original example, we don't want 100 pixels, we want one fractional unit. And what this FR unit kind of represents is very similar to what we talked about with the flex grow and flex shrink properties um, back in the Flexbox course. So if you remember in the Flexbox uh, course, if we had flex items that didn't take the entire space of their flex container, there was what we call empty space. And we had to give, um, we had to allocate out units to um, those flex items to determine how much empty space they would occupy. The fractional unit here is doing pretty much the same thing. So right now, for our column width, we're saying we want to give one column and it's going to equal one fractional unit. So basically, there's only one fractional unit to allocate. So that's 100% of the width of the um, grid container. If we came in here and put another column, you're gonna see that it's perfectly equal because 
Now we have a total grid container, which we know is 300 pixels wide because we created it. And we're giving the first column one FR and the second one FR. So there's two total fractional units. And if you take 300 divided by two, you get 150. So each of these are gonna be 150 pixels wide. You can see that um, as I hover over them. So that's what a fractional unit is. And we're gonna set this back to one fractional unit, so we have one column. And now instead of these explicit pixel values, I'm gonna say one FR, one FR, and one FR. And that gets us back to our original view that we had. And it's gonna say, I want to have three total rows and give it three fractional units. So if the height is 300 pixels, that's 300 divided by three. And um, whatever that value is, is going to equal the height of each of these items. So what we've said here is we want three columns and each of those columns is gonna be one fractional unit. There's three total fractional units allocated within the row dimension. So 300 pixels tall divided by three fractional units is 100 pixels each. To give us a little bit of uh, space to work with and some interesting calculations, let's make our grid a little bit more complex. Not, not actually more complex, just um, more grid cells to work with. So I'm gonna create an eight by eight grid. So I need eight of these one FR units to equally space those out. So what I can do is just type them all out. Let's copy and paste four more in there. And now you can see that we have lines one through nine, and this is kind of the, the fence post problem where you're counting how many fence posts you have versus how many sections of the fence you have. So we have eight sections of that fence or eight rows, but we have nine you know, fence posts or nine lines to go by. To get an equal amount of columns, you would do the same thing down here in the grid template columns. So now we're gonna have a grid that is um, eight by eight or 64 individual little grid cells. I know I said that I would not teach a whole lot of shorthand uh, CSS or shortcuts or stuff like anything like that, but in this case I'm going to because nobody wants to type out all of this stuff at once. There is a better way to do this. And all we have to do is use the repeat function within CSS. We haven't really talked a whole lot about CSS functions, but this is one that you can just kind of memorize just to have uh, in your toolkit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna repeat whatever unit eight times, and then we'll put in a comma, and we're gonna give it one FR, which means we're gonna repeat one FR eight times just like we have down here. So this right here is perfectly equivalent to this right here. And we can go ahead and copy this one down to the columns as well, since we have a perfectly square eight by eight grid. And we get the same result. Just as a spot check, you can now see your grid down here. So we have eight by eight or 64 total little grid uh, cells, and you can highlight each of them and kind of play around with them. I think this is a great place to stop this video. Um, and what we've learned here is basically how to uh, define your grid template using the grid template rows and grid template columns properties. In the next video, we're gonna talk about how do we actually get each of these items placed uh, into different little sectors of this grid. Once again, the playlist is in the description to view all of these videos in the correct order. And I can't wait to see you in the next video.